My place had a view like this. Would you stay home more? You know the answer to that one. Give me the police, please. What is it? Hello? A woman has been hurt. The guy just beat her up. Well, I'm at the Gateskill Arms. It's right next door. That must be uh, 27 German Lane. My name? Okay, Blaine. Cut it out and eat your breakfast. Oh, Mom. Mind your mother, Blaine. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hi, Hi Dad. Hi. You want some eggs? Scram, please. Sir. Did Dryden reach you last night? When was that? After dinner. I said that you were still at the office. Well, the switchboard's dead after seven, you know that. School bus in three minutes. Come on, hurry. Goodbye, kids. Bye, Dad. Bye, sweetie. Bye, Eddie. How about Thursday, Dad? Thursday. What about Thursday? No, you forgot already. The father-son game. Oh. Oh, Eddie, I'm sorry, Eddie, but I'm going to be in San Diego all next week. 
Well, now, that's what you get when you got a papa who's a very important executive. I thought you were a lawyer. Well, he was a lawyer, a very good lawyer. But now, big executive. School bus! Eddie? Yeah? I'll fly back for that game Thursday, okay? Oh, boy, that's swell. Surprise, surprise. Uh, Miss Evans, please. Hello, Ruth Mace. Can you have lunch with me? I've got to talk with you. No, not on the phone. I want to talk to you personally. All right, fine. 12 o'clock sharp. Usual place. Bye-bye. Tom. Mace, I uh, want you to go to San Diego today. Oh, today? I thought it was Monday. It was, but uh, I think you ought to inspect the plant on the weekend when nobody's there. Oh, why? I'm uh, worried about Joe Burnett. That's part of the job you've got to do. Give me an evaluation on how Burnett's doing. Uh, Tom, I, uh, I don't mind analyzing plant operations, but... Uh... Well, I hate being responsible for a direct evaluation of one of our top men. Mace, we stand to lose a $4 million government contract. Instead of one man getting the sack, it could mean 2,000 people out of work. Okay. I'll sharpen my axe. Not an axe. A scalpel. The patient's in your hands. Bad. Listen, you've seen this. Now, one. before you say anything, I, I have to say something, and I'm afraid I won't say it if you try to stop me. We can't see each other anymore. Oh, you don't want anything to happen to your marriage. Not really, and last night something almost did happen. I. I couldn't sleep after the police left. They question you? Yes, I told them I didn't see or, or hear anything. But after they left, I, I sat up thinking about us. Sweetheart. But you came to tell me the same thing, didn't you? No, no, I didn't. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. You see this morning's papers? They've mm -hmm. got the wrong man. This poor old bum of a janitor. He didn't do it. How can you be sure? I'm positive. <laughs> can you identify the man that did it? Maybe not in detail. But I know that he was twice this old drunk size and half his age. They've got the wrong man. What are you going to do? That's what I want to talk to you about. You'll be involved. You're going to the police? Have I got a choice? Do you, do you know what will happen to you if it comes out about us? To your position? To your whole life? Even, even my job, my life. Do you think I haven't thought about that? Now, now Mace, if he is innocent, they'll find out he is innocent. Mm -hmm. and, and then he'll be released. I wish I could believe that, sweetheart. No, and you have got to listen to me. Now, you can't even really identify this man. You can't even really describe him. So how can you possibly help the police? You've just, you've got to wait. Well, I suppose I could wait until I get back from San Diego. Speak to him personally. All right, then give me his assistant. Hello, I have information to give you about the your trial. 
I've written a deposition, and I'd like to see the district attorney. Oh, now, look, this isn't a crank call. I have information. It's very important, and I want to give it to him personally. I'll tell him my name when I get there, but not over the phone. Now, can he see me? Thanks. I'll be there in 20 minutes. I just ran into Scotty. He's asked us to stop by for a drink. Well, he wants us to see a new piece of sculpture he's just doing for the uh, Berkeley campus. I thought it might interest you at being your alma mater. Oh, yes, I'd like to, but I... Uh... Oh. No, no, that's all right. I, uh, I said that I would come, but I, I thought that you would probably be too busy. Oh, I didn't say that. It's just that I've got this little chore to do, and it'll take time. Okay, Doris, I'll try to make it, huh? Scotty's, right. I won't be back, Lori. No, sir. You can say that again. Not to this job, anyway. <laughs> I got you there, boy. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 you uh, you've been kicked upstairs, Mace. Oh, the job you did in San Diego cinched it. You're top brass now. Officer of the company, member of the board. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, it's but what you've been working toward, isn't it? You've certainly earned it, Mace. And it couldn't happen to a more surprised man. <laughs> hey, they'll never fire you now, huh? I'm going to do a piece for a college campus. I want to give them something that speaks their language. Something that'll reach out and grab them on their way to class. I want my piece to catch them. Hold them, make them listen to me. Just what would you like to say to them, Scotty? Lots of corny things like, don't compromise. Look life in the face and spit in its eye if you don't like what you see. Don't swallow a lot of bills just to be a success. The devil is success anyway. Oh, brother. You know, for my money, a bum's a success if that's what he really wants to be. A bigger success than a, a bank president who only got up there because someone expected him to. Boo. What did you say? I said Scotty is still talking like he was in one of our old bull sessions. I need another drink. That's pretty funny coming from you. You used to talk like that. Yeah, my green and pristine. You real green. A toast to your green youth. I was rather crazy about it. Yeah, well, we were all crazy about one another in those days. All so crazy, period. But Scotty here, uh, he's still crazy. Only in his line, he can't notice it. Also, he has talent. And no wife and kids. Hey, Scotty, where can I get another one of these, huh? Take a look inside. Liability. Uh, to the free soul, the no compromise type, they are the sirens that lure the, the young and the brave to wreck their ideals on the corporate rocks. Look who's accusing Scotty of talking bull. Hold it. What's that? Hydrochloric acid. I use it as a flux. What? Makes a great drink if you want to end up a hollow man. But as an organization man, I never have more than two double two HCLs at lunch. What's gotten into you, Mace? 
That little chore you had to do? To drive and hand you the hatchet once again? Oh, no, no, this is a different chore. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I chicken out on I got sidetracked by a little, uh, a little wing ding at the office in my honor. I was made a member of the board and an officer in the company with all the uh, concomitant fringe benefits, stock options, bonuses, and the key to the executive's washroom. Well, you really made the scene, Charlie. Let's have one on that. When you get to be chairman, I expect a commission to do a hunk of bronze symbolizing merging and such corporative-like activities. To the chairman of the board. The chairman of the board. To Mace and his corporate ambitions. There's a whole new line of dirty words. You ever notice that, Scotty, huh? Now, when we were in college, we, uh... Well, I should not have water over the dam. Mm -hmm. To old, ulcerated Etheridge's corporate image, huh? Long may it wave. Oh, I've got news for you, pal. Hard news. Doesn't wave no more. No more. I think it's time for us to go. Okay. Hey, you drive, huh? You're in much better shape than I am, and we are parents. What is it? What is it with you two? What the devil's happened to you? Call a cab then when he's ready, Scotty. You want to know, Scotty, huh? Huh? You really want to know? Tell him, sweetie. Tell him. Give him the, uh, the key word, huh? Okay. I'll give it to you. Integrity. The loss of say. Kind of just one of those, uh, romantic notions that, uh, uh, integrity. Mutually inconsistent with and exclusively from the whining and dining of Pompous W. Finley, head of regional sales, and the uh, idiot Mrs. Finley. And absolutely opposite, and making your wife smile graciously in her home at people that she despises. And those that you should despise, only you don't seem to because you keep inviting them back all the time. Mace, what are you doing? What is that? Scotty. He builds monuments that speak to the young. Me, I make pyres out of my old integrities. It's 4.30. slept for three nights. You look awful. What is it, Mace? What's wrong? Oh, it's nothing serious. It's just a few problems at the office. It's uh, nothing for you to concern yourself with. Better go back to sleep. I, uh, I'm going to shave and shower. District Attorney's version of your activities on September 24. Now, in your own words, suppose you tell us your story. Well, she moved in that day. It was, I guess, about noon. The I... deceased, Miss Merrill. Yeah. Well, I, I helped her move. I got the truck dolly and took her suitcases up for her. Did she pay you, give you a tip? Well, I hung around some and finally she got the idea and gave me a drink. <laughs> And did you speak with her? No, I just thrown it down the hatch. <laughs> she gave you a drink. Did you feel that she was making advances to you? What? Did she seem extra friendly? Well, she gave me a drink. Uh, aside from her giving you a drink, uh, you didn't feel that she, uh, that there was anything special about the occasion? Oh, no, sir, that's right, I didn't. Uh, she gave me the drink, I says thank you, and I left, and I, there wasn't nothing special about her. I wish I'd never seen her. Did you see her again in the course of the afternoon? No, I, uh, I was down with the boiler till evening. I had a pint of my own down there, and I finished it off. When did you see her next? Well, when the police caught me in the hall, they drug me up to her room. She's laying there dead. They, 
They took hold of me and they started yelling I did it. To the best of your knowledge, did the police have any facts upon which to base their accusation? Well, I'd done time. It wasn't anything serious, just, you know, pestering a few women and Mr. Stuff Yord, like I didn't ask you that. I'm asking about facts in connection with this case and this case only. On that evening, the police were summoned to 27 German Lane by an anonymous phone call. Did you make that call? No, I didn't know nothing until police got a hold of it. Why don't you find that fellow what called? Mr. Yord, please confine your responses to the questions asked. I didn't do it. I, I didn't kill her. Now, somebody must, must know I didn't. It, that, that fellow what called, he must have seen something. What's the matter? Are you, are, are you sick? Are you drunk? Or... Oh, not drunk. Sick, maybe. I don't know. <sighs> Can't sleep. Can't you tell me about it? I finally decided that there was only one thing to do, and I'd do it, and that would be the end of it once and for all. I made an appointment to see the DA and tell all. But later, that same day, I got promoted. I know. I, I called to congratulate you, but I, I couldn't get through. Did you get to the DA? No. Somehow, I never got around to that. Not that day, to the next day, to the next one. I'm glad. Ruth. They're going to convict that old guy of murder. You can't be sure of that. I'm sure. His attorney's a kid fresh out of law school, appointed by the court. I'll fix some coffee. just might work. It'd have to be a miracle. I'll go to the district attorney and tell him I saw what you saw. I swear they've got the wrong man. But you were already questioned by the police. You told me you hadn't seen a thing. I'll say I lied. That I didn't want to get involved. came from me. It was a man's voice. Suppose I say the man who called was up here with me. You'd be willing to do that? What have I got to lose? I'm not married, remember? No, it just wouldn't work. Not after that statement you made. They'd murder you on the stand, believe me. They'd annihilate you. You sure that you wouldn't mind getting involved? I think you just saved a man's life. Your Honor, defense has an unexpected witness. 
He's appearing at some embarrassment to himself, which explains his reluctance to come forward before now. I call Mr. William Scott to the stand. Place your right hand on the book, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Be seated, please. Your occupation, Mr. Scott? I'm a sculptor. A successful sculptor. I make a living. Are you personally acquainted with the accused or any other principal in this case? No. Will you give the court your account as you did to me this morning? On the evening of September the 24th, I was visiting Miss Ruth Evans. She lives in the Gateskill Arms. Miss Evans' apartment is right next to the building where the murder occurred. Go on. Well, we uh, spent the evening together, and I was about to go. I looked out of the dining room window, and I could see into the window that was across the way, down below. It was open. Uh, Your Honor, I don't know where all this is leading, but if this man is a material witness, he should have come forward long before now. Mr. Flanner, I think we may hear him out. The defense counsel has already explained the witness's reluctance to appear. When the witness concludes, I may ask for a recess to investigate his testimony. Make your motion at the proper time. Continue. Well, I, I heard angry voices. I looked and I saw a man and a woman having a violent fight. I was afraid the woman might be seriously hurt, so I called the police. Did you identify yourself? I'm afraid not. I guess I'm just like a lot of other people who don't like to get mixed up in things. Could you describe or identify the man you saw? In a general way, he was good-sized, big, middle-aged, uh, or younger. Can you say anything definite about the man you saw that night? Oh, yes. I can say definitely that it was not the defendant, Mr. Uh, Mr. York there. Your Honor, I ask for a recess at this time. Granted. Court will convene tomorrow, 10 a.m. Well, it all checks out, Mr. Flanner. He is what he says he is, a sculptor and a successful one. He's doing a piece for the Berkeley campus. He got a lot of publicity for something he did for a park down in Houston. Any connection with the murdered woman? No connection. We've checked and double-checked. I also have a deposition from the girl, Ruth Evans. Well, it all seems to jibe, all right. Yes? Hello. The guy who testified today, he was lying. It's another one of those calls. Tracy. This is the district attorney. May I help you? That sculptor, he was lying. I know. Oh, really? Well, we're always interested in hearing new information. If you have any facts that you think are pertinent to this case, we'd like to get your statement. Why don't you come down here and see us, Mr. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Never mind my name. I'm not getting dragged in. But I heard him talking. We have mutual friends, and uh, I heard him say he felt sorry for that janitor, wanted to help him out. Uh, I wish you'd come down here and see us. I'd keep it confidential, I promise you. Hello? Hello? Well, we start all over again with Mr. Scott. This time with a little skepticism. State may proceed with the cross-examination. Mr. Scott, how much time did you spend with Miss Evans that evening? Well, uh... Good part of the evening. Until just short of midnight, say, when, as you've testified, you witnessed the happenings across the courtyard. Yes, sir. Mr. Scott, at 11.20 on the evening in question, were you or were you not dressed in pajamas and bathrobe, complaining to a tenant across the hall about the noise from his party? I don't recall. It's possible. I have witnesses who will swear to it if necessary. You wish to deny it? No. Mr. Scott, if you were home at 1120, 
At what time did you begin to spend your long evening at the apartment of Miss Evans across town? Well, I guess later. I had an impulse, and I called her on the phone, and she said, come on over. In your pajamas and bathrobe? I changed, naturally. Then left your apartment at what time? I have no idea. Mr. Scott doing everything as quickly as possible. It would have taken you 40 minutes to call Miss Evans, change clothes, get down to your car, drive across town, park your car, and get up to her apartment. Did you see any West in the lobby when you came in? I don't recall. Did you use the elevator? Yes. Does the elevator have an operator? No, Mr. Scott, the elevator does not have an operator. In fact, there isn't an elevator in the building. Mr. Scott, did you read about this case in the papers? Yes, sir. Felt a great sympathy for this old man. Excuse me. I have grave misgivings about this. Mr. Scott, would you like to reconsider your testimony? It might be proper to ascertain the district attorney's intentions toward this witness. Your Honor, I think I'll probably decide not to waste the state's time and money by bringing perjury charges against Mr. Scott if he decides to retract his statements. Mr. Scott? Oh, yes, Your Honor, I would like to reconsider. Mr. Scott, I assume you wish to withdraw your testimony? Yes, sir. Completely? Completely. Will the two counsels please approach the bench? I'd like to see you two gentlemen and Mr. Scott in my chambers in ten minutes. The witness may step down. Under the circumstances, I have no alternative except to declare mistrial. The jury is dismissed. Court is adjourned. First and only. Well, the DA, did he give you a rough time? Not very. Called me a soft boiled egghead and sent me on my way. The defense attorney had something to say, too. He told me he made a deal with the DA. He's going to plead the old guy guilty and take a life sentence. Guilty? I guess they figured he's better off, nice and locked up. <laughs> what a lousy mess. What's the next move, Mace? You got any brilliant suggestions? The philosopher, counselor, old friend bit? Mm -hmm. Huh? The only major verity I learned since we left school is in the pinches, you're always alone. If you've got any guts, that is. out of sympathy for the defendant, Newton Yort, thus forcing Judge Smith to declare a mistrial. It is rumored that defense counsel will now plead his client guilty on a reduced charge. A search party of more than 200 volunteers has still...
What happened? I don't know. Crazy guy tried to crowd me off the road. Shall I call an ambulance? Never mind, he's a goner. He must have been in the bar while I was with Scotty. I realized who he was as soon as I saw him in the stretcher. I guess, I guess he figured that my next move would be to testify myself, and he decided that he'd, he'd keep me from doing it. I, uh, I can't tell you how much I, I regret this, Tom, uh, the embarrassment that I'll probably bring to the company. And... That's right. And to your children, your wife. Yeah, it'll be a mess. So what do you think you'll accomplish by going to the D.A. at this late date? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? No, it isn't. The man who killed that woman is dead. That closes that. I don't want you to think for a moment that I condone what you've done, but uh, I'd like to get a few things straight in your mind and mine. This old man that you propose to save, isn't he as nearly useless to himself as a human being can get? Bound to end up in trouble? Maybe. Leave things alone. He'll have a place to sleep. He won't go hungry. With luck, he'll live out his three score and ten. That's quite a break for him, getting pinched for murder, huh? Stop being so righteous for a moment, Mason. Hear me out. At the expense of your wife, your family, your friends, Yes, and the company that just elected you to its board of directors. You want to get this, uh, this derelict turned loose. Well, what then? You can't hold down a job. You just wander around, in and out of jail for vagrancy, theft, or whatever. Drink. And some cold morning, they'd find him lying in a ditch dead. Can't you see that? Yeah, maybe you're right. But it doesn't help me any. It's his ditch in his life. Lay off the saintliness, Mace. It doesn't suit you. It's sheer self-indulgence. Some people are better off in an institution, and this old lush is a prime example. You're making a moral issue where there just isn't one. Mace, I've brought you up a long, long way. In ten years, you can retire a very rich man. I know, Tom. I'm grateful. Well, I did it because you're bright and useful, useful to me and the company. Well, a useful man, to stay useful, sometimes has to do hard things. He has to accept burdens and think maturely, realistically, unsentimentally, even if it hurts. Life's an equation, Mesa, a, a complex equation, not a nursery school choice between a good apple and a bad apple. Now, that's what you're trying to reduce this to, and frankly, I'm surprised. I'm sorry, Mace. I'm a mite disappointed. I'll sleep on it. Again. You'll see things a great deal more clearly in the morning. Maybe you're right. I know I'm right. You just remember all the people that depend upon you. And that includes me. I talk. Your Honor, the state proposes to reduce the charge against the defendant for murder in the first degree to manslaughter. Will the court accept a plea on this charge? The defendant will rise. The state proposes to abate the charge against you. Do you understand the substance of the charge now made? Yes, sir. Guilty. Have you discussed the charge with your attorney? Yes, sir. And how do you plead? I just did. <laughs> Please. I was not putting the question before. I do so now. To the charge of manslaughter, how... I didn't do it, Judge. <laughs> if it pleases the court, I have testimony to give. Bailiff, bring the man forward. What is your...
your name, sir? Mason Etheridge. On what point do you wish to be heard? I was a witness to the killing. Mr. Etheridge, this court has recently witnessed an attempted perjury of exactly... Uh, Mr. Scott uh, tried to testify in my place at my request. I, uh... Well, I didn't want to come forward. I had personal reasons. Swear in. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. He's seated. My name is Mason Etheridge. My address is 83 Edam Court. <clears throat> I am an employee of Dryden Industries. I'm married and uh, I have three children. Proceed. I spent the evening of September the 24th in the apartment of Miss Ruth Evans in the Gateskell Arms. I witnessed the murder of which this man is accused. I know that he is innocent. Checking out, Mace? I tried to reach at home. Your wife has no idea where you are. Well, that's where I'm headed now. It's on the radio, on television, in the newspapers. Don't you think you owed it to her to prepare? Even if you didn't think you owed it to me. How could I prepare anyone? I couldn't prepare myself. When I went into the courtroom today, I didn't know that I was going to have the guts to do what I did. Yeah, you did it all right. Feeling better now? No. A lot of people got hurt when I stood up in there, including you and the company. I'm sorry, Tom. The thought of getting fired didn't bother you, huh? Sure, bothered me plenty. In case you didn't know it, I liked my job. I even thought it was important. But, uh, well, I guess there's a small corner in everybody that just isn't for hire. Take three or four weeks off, Mace. When you get back, your new office will be ready for you. You're a righteous character, Mace. A real Don Quixote. But you're an even better man than I thought you were. In spite of the fact I haven't changed my mind one little bit about that uh, drunken bum you let loose on us. Come on. I'm late for that posh dinner at the Embassy Club. I think I know the why. It applies to me, too. But it works both ways. And I didn't do what you did. Does it uh, matter that it was the only time? I don't want to hear about it. Well, want me to move out? We have three children. That's a good answer, but it's not enough. You're married to a hero, you know that? Yeah, that's what I am. A hero. The uh, judge congratulated me for my courage. That was his word, courage. The spectators, they all applauded me. The photographers took pictures. 
Uh, they talked about uh, captions. A hero, that was their word. Oh, and Tom Dryden. <laughs> he patted me on the back and gave me a vacation with pay. I thought I'd blown the job the whole 12 years. I mean, isn't this something? It took me a month or so to finally manage to do something that, well, that anybody with a, with a trace of human instinct would have done right off the bat. And yet, well, now, here I am. I'm a, I'm a fire-breathing image of courage and, uh, and public spirit. Still got my job, my uh, respectable place in society, everything. Everything but my wife. Yeah, she knows I'm no hero. Maybe you are. Oh, I don't mean for what you did in the courtroom. But for knowing that you're not a hero. Maybe you are. Forgive me. Oh, Mason. Years ago, I made up my mind that you'd sold out. Years ago. That you'd sold out everything you believed in for the key to the executive washroom. If you can forgive me for that, I guess I can forgive you. Thank you. 